Hi guys, um, since uh, uploading uh, part two, I've made a couple of changes to the cell, nothing uh, very significant. But um, if you remember, I had some little flexi leads um, from the uh, socket to the plates, and that meant that the, uh, the stainless steel plates touched the bottom of the enclosure. And uh, I wanted to be sure that there was a, a good passage of uh, liquid so that any uh, bubbles could escape. And I was going to put some little uh, plastic feet to raise those up. But what I've done instead, get you close up. Um, say so I was going to put some little plastic feet, uh, some little L shaped plastic brackets off those nylon bolts uh, to keep the plates off but uh, what I've done instead is uh, I put some rigid copper wire uh, to support the plates and uh, let me make this one to make it more obvious so now uh, when I take the um, the cell out uh, instead of it flapping about as it did before it's held rigidly uh, to the uh, to the lid or the cap um, so obviously I've got my negative connection sorry I've got my negative connection and uh, I'll call it my positive connection there from the center of the coax and then um, this uh, other bolt is just uh, a bolt in isolation that's simply holding the end of that up uh, so it just makes it a, a bit nicer so when I fill this up and wash it out I can just take away uh, that part and deal with it and then uh, this part oh by the way um remember i made that larger nipple well the uh, uh this uh, yellow hose um stretches uh, enough to uh, to go onto there without any problem so i didn't have to make a, a reducer um see i could have been worrying about something that i didn't need to worry about so i just went for it um okay so uh, so that's just a, a little update uh, oh, the <laughs> the other thing, I didn't see it until I um, actually looked at it on the video. But one of these clips was the wrong way around. Um, I think I've been uh, one clockwise and one anti-clockwise, but I simply took it off and twisted it with the pliers through 180 degrees. So now they they look the same. Won't make an atom of difference to the way it works, but I'll feel better knowing that it's right. This is the uh, test lead that I shall be using uh, with the equipment. It's uh, one meter of um, uh, IG58U, that's a 50 ohm coax cable. Um, manufacturer specification says it should be 30.8 picofarads per foot, and I've got 95 picofarads. Uh, for one meter so that's uh, that's about right and um, I, I guess it, it sort of confirms the calibration of the instrument as much as anything so with the cell in place and uh, one meter of uh, RG58U. The uh, total capacitance now is um, 225 picofarads. So the total capacitance now is 225 picofarads, and that's um, for a dry cell, no water in there, and uh, that's an air dielectric. Um, so I'm only giving you this information because um, it's uh, well, just if anybody wants to follow what I'm doing, um, but uh, it'll be useful for me later on. At least I hope so. With uh, about an eight millimeter gap between the uh, bottom of the stainless steel and the bottom of the tank, there, uh, when I've got uh, a, uh, the water in the tank, there now. Uh, 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 something this uh, call it 10 millimeters above the plate then uh, the tank holds uh, 
about 260 millilitres of water. Well, I've got something very odd going on. Um, I've just filled the cell with ordinary tap water, so the dielectric constant of, uh, of uh, the water at room temperature ought to be somewhere around 80. Um, but I've got the uh, the bridge here on the uh, getting that on the uh, 10 microfarad range there, and um, I've got the. Uh, the loss balanced out there so and the null there and uh, that's uh, 6.1 microfarads so it's 10 microfarads times 0.6 uh, 1 um, and I'm not expecting that to be 6.1 microfarads so uh, I need to uh, think about what's going on there but anyway that's the actual measurement I'll uh, I'll check my instrument but um, I was not expecting that. Well, I've uh, just put a, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor on here, and uh, again, I'm on the, uh, the the 10 microfarad range. Uh, that's balanced out there. Give it lots of sensitivity. There, and that's balanced out there. And that's coming in at uh, 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 10 times 0.42. So that says that's uh, 4.2 microfarads. So, um, you know, 4.7, 4.2, no big deal. So uh, when this thing comes in at uh, sort of 5 or 6 microfarads, um, that must be what it looks like. Um, but that doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that too much as I want to do some ordinary DC tests. But um, uh, anybody's got any good ideas or answers for that? The space between the plates is something like right. Um, it's not exactly one millimeter, um, but um, I'm just a bit perplexed by that. By the way, I'm sure that most folks making a, a cell like this have no interest at all in the capacitance, but because of the way I want to look at driving this thing, I, I need to understand uh, the capacitance. Um, but uh, anyway, um, anybody got any uh, bright ideas as to why the capacitance is uh, so high, then uh, I, I'd be happy to uh, hear from you. Um, uh, if I find a credible answer, I'll put it in the um, uh, in the comments box. Uh, sorry, I'll put it in the uh, description box below this, uh, what they call show more box, um, to save you going through all of the comments. Uh, um, but uh, I'm I'm a bit thrown by that. Thanks for the feedback I've been getting, guys, and uh, thank you for the questions because your your questions have helped me to. Um, think of developing the project in uh, various other ways that I hadn't considered um, be before I started. Uh, so thanks for watching. Bye bye.